Mm. It's very nice. It's very feathery, like cloud-like. Um, so I've gotten a few questions about this grass here. The, the predominant one that you can see is Korean feather grass, Calamagrostis brachiatrichia. I don't know if any of you guys got a chance. We have the entire plant list on the internet. Um, one thing I'll say is it's still a work in progress. You know, this is kind of based off of the drawings and sometimes plants were brought in last minute substitute. So sometimes things are on here that are not up here and vice versa. So bear with us. But um, this is Calamagrostis brachiatrica. It's beautiful. It's got like a kind of pink hue in the daytime. Um, it's probably been in bloom for about a month now. I would say there's too many of them. Um, but, and it also is a really voracious self-seeder. Um, another one of the really strong plants in this area is that yellow, it's a Coreopsis. It's Coreopsis um, full moon. That's been blooming all summer and it's kind of a bully. It's, it's really, you can see, it's kind of pushing itself up against the other plants and it takes a lot, but it really is a, a big powerhouse. And then we also have the yarrow, um, Achillea uh, philopendula, and that's Parker's variety, which was really beautiful in bloom. It was a yellow flower. It's really beautiful as a seed head. Um, one of the things that we've, I, I had problems with is, um, you know, it grows in very fallow soils normally, and our soil here is pretty rich. And it often grows in dry soils. So I just pull in, that other group is coming past us. But so we have a rich soil here with irrigation. Um, so it shot up and was, was doing a lot of flopping over. Next year I'll probably pull back on the irrigation um, a lot and see how it does. Uh, there's also a couple different catmints in here. One is the Nepeta Siberica, and then one is Nepeta Walker's Low. Also pretty... Everyone's kind of fighting for their space up here. Um, and then the other, the thinner grass is the Millennia. Um, I believe the common name is more grass, but I've been wondering, so why don't I look it up? Yeah, more flame, more grass, yeah. So... That's, I mean, that has been pretty strong. We haven't had any real problems with it this year. Um, the meadow walk, I think is the official term. Um, as far as like pests and diseases, we haven't sprayed any pesticides up here. We, we haven't had the need to and are hoping that we won't. Um, We've had a pretty bad grub infestation down south this year. I think the grubs are really intense everywhere. I've heard a lot of gardeners complaining about it this year. We've been doing uh, par parasitic uh, nematodes, which have been working, and we're hoping that in the spring we can use that again and maybe get them. Um, another thing I'm interested to see is, you know, in the normal life cycle of grubs is they go down into the warmer soil in the winter, and again, we don't have that, so... See. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but we also, we get other pests. We've had mites up here, which we attacked with um, beneficial mites. We've, we've been doing a lot of biological control this year. It's been really fun, actually. Um, do we get a lot of weeds? Yeah. Um, I think because the, well, now that's, that's the pretty, pretty tricky question. question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think because of the density of the planting, that helps a lot with the weeds. The gravel mulch helps a lot with the weeds, but yeah, we get weeds. I mean, there's an ailanthus tree planted right over the high line, so definitely get lots of ailanthus. Uh, further along, there's a uh, polonia somewhere that's spreading itself. Um, yeah, a lot of times people ask us, like, how do you know which are the weeds? Or they're all weeds, and, and I would, you know, say, well, really, a weed is anything you don't want. I mean, in the spring, I'll be pulling up all kinds of Calamagrostis seedlings, and they're weeds to me, so. So what do you do with the materials that you're pulling up? Are you giving it away? Um, well, yeah, we, you mean like any divisions we do? Yeah. So this spring will be our first time having to divide, or maybe we were talking about doing some this fall, we'll see. Um, 
And we're kind of trying to figure out what we're going to do with it. Yeah, maybe plant sale, maybe giveaways. Um, I can definitely give you guys my card if you might be interested. Um, we often we have don't we have donated material to community gardens in the area. Other um, like the Broadway Mall Association, the Chelsea Garden Group, I think has taken some of our stuff or at least we talked to them. And then anything that we have that is you know leaves or not really anything that's like a, a plant would be compost. That's one of the big challenges is space. So we have really very minimal space to work in. Um, we have a place to store our tools and we are able to kind of stage our material there. And then luckily we're able to take it out to um, the Department of Sanitation has a compost facility out on Staten Island at fr near Fresh Kills. We're able to take our stuff out there because we're a city park. So everything gets composted, just not on site. We have a very small on-site compost bin that's just kind of the fun. So you said that you have really rich soil, but you also have like a green roof system, which is usually not rich soil. Do you know what kind of soil mix you have? Um, I believe it's a, a sandy loam is the official classification. Um, it was done to a very a spec by a soil scientist. Um, and it has a certain, I don't know the percentages, but it definitely has a certain percentage of organic matter. Um, that the, the green roof system is really just that bottom layer. Right. You guys don't have to worry about weight up here. No. <laughs> we don't have to worry about weight, which is pretty great because this structure was built to support, I think, like eight fully loaded trains. So it's pretty, in that way, yeah, it's not like a green roof. Right. Do you actually compost your, uh, any of your beds? Any of our what? Do you compost any of the beds? Well, we have this gravel mulch, so we can't really put compost out in the beds. Um, this year we've been experimenting with compost tea growing. Um, we, again, though, a lot of our plants don't really want a really fertile soil. Um, we'll do it to kind of feed some trees or some of our vines down in section one. But like the grasses, they're prairie grasses, the yarrow, you know, a lot of them are perfectly happy in a, in a fallow soil. So, but if we need to, we've, we've been doing compost tea, which is 